I'm Andres Vot. I work for Adobe. And today I'm gonna give you an insight on how to use CI, CI CD systems with RDEs on cloud service for purposes of testing and continuous integration, some techniques. And in the second part, I'm gonna hand it over to Jakub to give us a outside of Adobe customer perspective on the same topic. Um, interestingly, I didn't know about all of the journey that Jakub had in the previous talk. I was part of it. Uh, I think that already takes us to the first slide I have. It's how did we get here? So early 2022, I got uh, in touch with Jakub, um, looking into some problems that they were facing. I think partially uh, some of them were related. So. Um, but I still didn't know the full extent of it. So it's still quite interesting to, to see that point of view. And one of the um, points that we touched early back then was that they really had problems with testing strategy. Um, Stefan also mentioned that earlier in, in the talk about the uh, custom functional tests, how they use it to validate the JSONs. But in the current way, it was failing way too late in the pipeline. So they would do the local development, but then the failures were uh, found way too late in, in Cloud Manager. So I started to get that fe this feedback, looking into that, and working on a POC on how this could be tested closer and how this could be done on an earlier stage. Also back then, uh, RDE started to become a thing, so I'm also starting to look into those aspects. So if we look at the AM Cloud Service offering, how it looks like, I think this is a perspective we've seen already a couple of times. We have the developer using the SDK locally, maybe doing some manual testing, and then these code changes are pushed into Cloud Manager. There is a Cloud Manager pipeline that runs, runs the functional tests. But at this point, the code is already merged into, into Cloud Manager. So the missing part here is a way to quickly iterate over pull requests and uh, fail fast so that uh, the developer can make a git push and basically get a quick feedback. So obviously, this is not something that we need immediately. But the more a project grows, probably you already have a CI system. You have some uh, build step tests that like unit tests or some things that uh, do a Maven verify, but then the, pro the projects grow and you need to do some integration testing, some functional tests. Those most of the times will be some type of black box testing where you deploy your code into an, some place, in this case an RD instance, and then you do some HTTP requests to validate that the system actually behaves like it's, it's intended. So we already established that we need to deploy our code somewhere. We, what are the options that we might have? So the first one, do nothing, accept the risk. Probably not the best solution, but uh, yeah, I wanted to mention it to, uh, as a thing to not do. Some of the options that um, have been mentioned is to try to replicate the SDK, uh, re try to replicate cloud using SDK. Uh, instances. So you basically start an author, you start a publish instance, you start a uh, dispatcher. This is a complex and very cost costly method, and still you are not gonna be close to cloud since missing they're missing components like Mongo replication and so on. So another option would be to push into a sandbox or a dev environment. This already brings us closer to the cloud. But the reality is it's still slow, and there are still some limitations in terms of reproducibility, and the code is already pushed into Cloud Manager, though you can specify a different branch. So here is where really the RDEs come to the rescue, offer us a good way to deploy quickly, and also to make reproducible builds. I'm not going to go too much into details on the specifics on the RDE. I think Carl already mentioned that very good. So I'm going to rather look into how a CI would look like. So for this sample, um, I have a GitHub repository there. I'm not going to do a recorded demo, so I'm going to do a live demo. Let's see how it works. Um, I'm brave. <laughs> this, uh, I decided to go with a sample implementation using CircleCI. It is publicly available. You can look into that. 
Um, but every other system should also be very easily applicable. You can do it in Jenkins um, or any other CI system. So for the purposes of this demo, let me switch over here. I have a fork of the weekend project. It's, slight, it's a little bit outdated, but for the demo purposes, completely relevant, uh, valid. And I have a small demo script that basically will create a dummy commit and push it into the, into the weekend repository. So I'm just running that. We just have the dummy commit. I have a uh, open pull request already on the repository. And we see that here we have the new commit. Uh, it's big enough, yes. And in a couple of seconds, we see CircleCI jumping in and triggering the, the pipeline. So let's have a look into how this looks like. So we have here a flow where we do a reset at the beginning of the um, pipeline. So for, I'm going to go over all of the steps, and I have corresponding slides for the different steps. So for really creating reproducible results and do not have leftover content or components installed into the RDE, I opted for really resetting and starting uh, from a clean slate on every execution. This usually takes around 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I opted to do a fire and forget at the end of the pipeline ex execution. In this way, we the reset, we can check in the beginning of the pipeline if it's on a clean slate. And if so, we can skip over the reset. If not, we can still do the reset. It will take a, a bit longer, but we still get a, a result. So if we go back to the pipeline, this is what's happening in this reset step. We see it was only 47 seconds, so that's a good time. Um, obviously, it didn't execute the reset. It just checked, hey, it's in a clean slate, so we can move on. So the next step that we have uh, in this pipeline is we have a, a build. Nothing fancy, it's just a, so let's have a look into it. Uh, okay, it's still not got the, to the face. So this is just doing a Maven clean, Maven clean install. So it's building the weekend project, nothing that we don't know. But then on, in parallel, we are also doing this prepare step. So in this prepare step, what uh, I'm doing is I'm creating an admin-like user. So as I mentioned before, we need a, we will doing HTTP requests. So in order to authenticate those requests, we need a user, especially on the author instance, and to operate some of the actions, we need an admin-like user. I had different options to generate this user. I opted for a OHA configuration that contains a repo in its script. So this looks something like this. We check if the user exists, just in case. We delete it, and then we create this test admin user with a specific password. It is. It turned out to be the simplest way to create users on the fly without reusing passwords. So with this method, I can generate this uh, OHA configuration JSON file on the fly every time with a new password. And then um, in the end, we add this user as a administrator. Um, so if we go back into the project, we see that the prepare step has finished. Um, then the next step that we are going to look is the install. Also, nothing fancy. Carl and David already demoed that. It's an, doing an RDE install. In this case, I really opted to install the whole weekend package, including the dispatcher configuration, everything. Um, but one small caveat, I figure out that uh, after you install it, the AM instance is not immediately available, so it might take some time. So my solution for that, and that is something that we can see in this RDE ready state, that's going to happen a bit later, is to pull the um, publish instance on a regular basis and verify that the title with uh, the title actually contains the word weekend. So with this way, uh, during the startup, at some point, I think Jakob also entered into some of these startup problems. So we, it is a workaround I found to figure out, OK, now the publish instance has all the content. I will assume that the author instance also has all the content, so we can start testing. Probably not the best solution in for the scope of this demo. I decided it's good enough. Probably there are better ways to do that. or. If you have ideas, I'm always welcome. So the RDE installation still is taking some time. 
I'm going to show that this actually goes to the end, or maybe not. I don't know. It's live demo. But le um, let's look a little bit into testing, the, the testing strategy now. So we are, let's imagine we have the RDE instance ready. We have the content installed. We are ready to test. So the um, current archetype contains some Java functional tests that you can run locally. Um, Basically, with Maven Clean Verify and uh, certain parameters, you can run from your local instance, or in this case, from the CI instance. You can run this HTTP tests against this author and publish instance. And that's, that would be your custom functional tests or even your product tests. On top of that, uh, there in this example code, uh, there is a call to an exploratory service. So whenever you run the Cloud Manager pipeline, under the hood, it is using a microservice that's at the moment uh, not exposed, but only avail available internally. But we are exploring to expose that to customers for availability. And as part of this demo, I'm calling this, this API. So instead of running your whole tests with Maven locally, where you need a JVM and all this infrastructure, you basically call an API endpoint you get an execution ID, and you can then pull over this execution ID, and once it's finished, you get the results back. And in the back end, in our service, this platform is downloading the, jar, the test jar, executing them, uh, parsing the results, and exposing that as an API. This applies as well for um, UI tests, now a new thing with where we are st starting to look into UI tests and uh, as well Lighthouse performance tests. So since this is still on the runs and I see this timer overdue, I think I didn't start it correctly, let's have a look into a older execution that already finished to how this looks like and then I will hand it over to Jakob. So we see here the execution finished, we have an RDE ready after one minute and then we run these different tests. So the custom functional tests, nothing, fa nothing, nothing fancy. We have basically Maven Clean Verify with the parameters of the instance, so the URL and the user. And in the case of our exploratory service, this is the same for the product test as well as the Lighthouse tests. It looks something like this. So first of all, we generate a JSON payload with the test module. And in the second step, we run the JSON payload with an in-house CLI, and we get the results as these API results like this. And that would be my part of it, and I will hand it over to Jakub to share his perspective. Um. All right, so you've seen this slide already. Uh, that's the, the setup we have. Uh, AEM serves JSON. There's no HTML rendering at all. And we have a Vue.js application that is meant to consume that. And in the middle, there is Nuxt, which is our server-side rendering component here. So that's exactly the same situation as I presented in my former talk. So as you can see, that's, that was an e-commerce platform. So a lot of moving parts, dozens of services, and that was totally headless, so not a standard HTML rendering approach uh, on AEM. And of course, that all those interconnections and dependencies mean that in order to see the full picture, you need not only AEM, but also that at least one of those applications that consume the data from, from AEM. Um, and, and initially we started with, uh, and we are still doing that by the way, I initially started just like everybody uh, with a local SDK, that was the, the way to go, but there is a bunch of issues with, with local SDK, and, and David and, and Carl mentioned that before, uh, but for us, uh, we, we noticed a few discrepancies between the SDK, so even though you run the same jar file in the cloud and in your local, at least in theory, there's still a few things that can go wrong, um, in our case, the, the, probably the most prominent example was uh, the, the unified shell. So a colleague of mine started working on a feature, and he used, tested that successfully on his local. Uh, everything was working fine. He pushed the code to the cloud, and all of a sudden it stopped working because of that unified shell, which you do not have on your local. So we were looking for something better in order to improve day-to-day -day development work, a workflow. 
uh, of course, all those surrounding services uh, that you have. Um, in our case, that, that's not only EM, there's a bunch of other stuff like different APIs, the, the Vue.js application. Um, that, that is also what is missing on your local setup. So you double click on a jar file, does not spin up all of them. Um, and that can lead to some false positive uh, results in general that you think that something is working, but in fact it is not just because you didn't test the whole integration properly. Um, and you're going to see some significant differences in terms of behavior, as like how assets are handled or how workflows are handled, how replication works. That is totally different in the cloud versus on your local environment. And you, you can keep trying to build the same thing on your local, but that's probably your road to nowhere simply because you can't literally mirror the same setup. You, you don't know how it's been built. Um, so that, that, that was a, a one of the drivers for us to look into RDEs uh, as soon as they showed up. Um, and we came up with, uh, with an idea of a review application. Um, and that's going to be like the key takeaway here. Uh, as we implemented something similar for that Vue.js application. So whenever you open a, a pull request or a merge request, we, we're using GitHub, so these are called merge requests here. So whenever you open a merge request, there is a pipeline that kicks in afterwards, and that's going to bring up uh, a new environment just for you, a totally isolated one. Um, so that was uh, a no-brainer for us as soon as RDEs showed up that we would like to incorporate them into our stack just because we had a super successful implementation with those, those Vue.js uh, applications which are being deployed to Kubernetes, so totally not AEM related at all. Um, and with, with such an approach, that streamlines testing a lot. As a, if you're uh, a stakeholder or a QA engineer or whoever that is interested in a new feature that is being developed, all you need to do to share the, the result is just to copy and paste the URL and send it to someone. It's like that environment is being spawned for you behind the scenes and at the, at the very end you, you get a URL and that, that's kind of it. Um, and the whole thing is totally isolated. So if you'd like to break it or if you'd like to experiment with something that is potentially dangerous or can result in a, in a massive downtime, you can do it here. No one will complain. That's all yours. So if something goes south, no one's going to notice except yourself. Um, and you also don't need to do anything. I mean, like, you don't need to install any tools. Uh, that, that's particularly annoying when, when you have a lot of applications in your stack and it written in different frameworks and different languages. Like if you'd like to have like a fully fledged stack, local stack, you would have to install so many tools, so many different frameworks, build so many different projects, and you're going to spend a lot of time just setting things up instead of like pushing things forward. So just let the pipeline do it for you. That, that was uh, our approach here. Um, so our review application here is composed out of two parts. The RDE is just one part as that produces or renders that JSON. And we have a corresponding Vue.js front end, so that Next application or Next server-side rendering component, uh, which is automatically plugged in. So essentially, when your merge request pipeline is over, you end up with two um, applications or sub-applications running, which compose the whole stack, which is enough for you to test uh, the whole thing end to end and not just inspect what, what AEM would render, uh, which is in this case just a plain JSON file. Um, so this is how it looks from uh, uh, GitLab uh, UI perspective. That's a sample merge request that I created. Um, and at the very end, when the pipeline is done, you get a free URLs, free buttons. The one goes to author, this author RDE. Uh, the second one goes to author, uh, pub, uh, publish RDE. And the third one is that uh, Vue.js application, which is being deployed to Kubernetes. Uh, so from pipeline standpoint, that's how it looks. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff happening here, but there are two important parts. Those are that pre-deploy and deploy stages. Um, I'm going to explain what that pre-deploy does in a second. Uh, but the deploy step, uh, or those three deploy steps uh, or jobs, they either deploy to RDE using Adobe I.O. or deploy to Kubernetes in case of that Vue.js application. Uh, there are also three corresponding uh, removal jobs for those deployment ones. So whenever your merge request gets closed or when you close it because like you stopped your experiment or something, of course you'd like to do a cleanup and those jobs will be triggered automatically uh, upon merge request closure, which is quite neat. It, it's a GitLab thing, uh, but, but that's how it works. 
a few caveats here. Um, so we decided to pre-provision all our RDEs, and there's a, there's a number of reasons behind that. So first of all, um, it takes time. Uh, it, it's not instantaneous. You need to wait like 10 minutes, maybe some a little bit longer in certain cases, but it takes time. Um, we faced a few failures when it comes to creation of RDEs. So you create an RDE and it just fails. You don't really know why. Um, so that was another reason. And even though you go for that, let's create a brand new RDE uh, whenever that merge request shows up, you still need to do some initial provisioning on top of it. So you need to like assign your users. Uh, you need to probably deploy a set of cloud manager variables, which are strictly required for, for a given RDE to work, or pretty much any uh, AM as a cloud environment. So there, there's some work to be done for every single RDE. So we decided to just skip this step and pre-provision all of that, um, just, just to speed things up. Uh, and, it, and here uh, we have, um, like, Git, in GitLab, there's a concept of an environment, uh, which is like a, essentially an interface that you can um, implement. Uh, and it's totally up to you what, how you're going to deploy or where you're going to deploy. And there's a one constraint in it with those GitLab environments. And, and I'm going to show you uh, that in a second on the screenshot. So you can associate only one URL with each environment. And we need three URLs, so we're going to need to create three GitLab environments. Uh, that was a, a consequence of that limitation. Uh, and the last step is the, the whole state management and merge request to RDE allocation. It's like you need to know whether you can use given RDE or not, and that's what that pre-deployment step is all about. Uh, so we do not create those on the fly. Uh, we have all of them pre-provisioned, so we need to decide whether a given RDE is free, or maybe we don't have a, an RDE available and we need to just fail the pipeline. So that's what that pre-deployment step does. It essentially manages the state and, and maintains that merge request and RDE state. Um, so that's the view from, uh, from GitLab environment perspective. As you can see, those two RDE virtual environments, uh, one for author, another one for publish, got group in the RDE section at the very top. And at the bottom, there is uh, another environment, uh, the, the Vue.js application, which is not AEM related at all. It, it got deployed to Kubernetes. And last but not least, here's how the, the pipeline would look like. Uh, that's a snippet from, from a GitLab YAML file. Uh, there, of course, it's just a subsection of it, but uh, there are two important parts here. The first is the deployment, and the second is the removal. Uh, as you can see, there's an environment part or element uh, that contains the name, the URL, when it should be stopped if unused, that kind of thing. Um, and the removal is a corresponding job, which essentially is triggered when necessary. Of course, you can trigger that by hand as well. That, that's also doable. Uh, but yeah, that's more or less how it works. Uh, I skipped all those Adobe I.O. commands as that's been explained already, so there's no point to, to repeat that. But in a nutshell, that's how it works. And that's all we had. Excellent. And as well, we have some questions. Yeah. Front-end pipeline again, <laughs> how do you deal with lack of front-end pipeline? I think we need to discuss that a little bit further. Um, I still don't know the details on the front-end pipeline. I know broadly what it does, but definitely and, and it will need to look into that. <laughs> then how many RDEs do you recommend having in a team to achieve that's what you showed? It's hard to say. I, it's going to depend on the size of the project and the modules. I would say if you have a team that's working only on one repository, maybe one RDE to isolate it for the pull requests for that project is good enough. Maybe you need a second one for individual troubleshooting to not block on that one. If your project is more complex and you have modules that then are aggregated, eventually you might need one per module and one at a later state. It's, there is no definitely answer, but I would say whenever you do a pull request, that probably having one there is a good practice. Okay. 
why not use the system ready framework as that is intended to tell your system it's properly up and running instead of checking title? Uh, because I implemented that very late before preparing the talk and I probably didn't <laughs> have time to do it then <laughs> differently. Excellent. Then Michael wants to know, is an RDE always the same version as your AEM production environment? No. That's some conversation still happening around that. The RTE is always, after a reset, is always going to be updated to the latest available uh, release version. There are some conversations around how we can extend that to pinpoint it or to allow some specifics or still in, still in the flux, but um, requirements are being captured and we are thinking about solutions. Okay. Thomas wants to know, how do you deal with the lack of RDEs? Just fail the pipeline and let people wait for a free one to show up? Yeah, I mean, like, that's, uh, th that's how it works. I mean, like, in, in our case, we have eight RDEs. Uh, I'm not sure why we have that many. Probably <laughs> because there's one RDE mapped to uh, every single dev environment. That's what I heard on, uh, during one of, the, one of the calls with Adobe. I'm not sure if that is true or not, but we have eight of them. And yeah, when there is no RDE available, we're going to just fail the pipeline. And it's like there's no place we can deploy to. So simple as that. I have a slightly different perspective on that. Uh, we have a similar pipeline internally. And our decision was to not to fail the pipeline, but to queue it. So yes, you will have longer execution times and you will basically queue them with the expectation that overnight it, people will not commu commit and then it will be uh, worked up. So there are different solutions. There is no bull magic bullet for everything, I think. It will depend on every project and, and what you're intending to do. It, it all boils down to how long you're willing to wait. Uh, if you're deploying something and expect something immediately, I think that uh, a fair, uh, that would be a fair a decision to just let you know that, hey, there's no environment where you can deploy to, but if that is not critical and you can wait, then, well, you can just wait and for the next day and your changes will be deployed if that gets queued. So, yeah. I wanted to show, maybe very quickly, uh, this is probably not representative, but general executions of what I demoed are going around 15 to 20 minutes. Here we see one of those executions where I did an initial reset and it took 12 minutes to reset, but then we have quite a fast execution of the rest of the steps. All right, last question. Robin wants to know, will Adobe in the end support getting a pre-provisioned image on your RD so you can speed up this pipeline and testing? Similar to the options uh, around the release version, there are also some conversations, not an uh, image, but the idea is going more into the direction of uh, the concept of a snapshot. I don't know the details. Probably Carl is better to talk about the, det uh, the implementation details, but I think we're going into the direction of providing a snapshot. Nothing is on the roadmap, so no promises from my side, but conversations into that direction. So you don't need to provide, you don't need to install all of the content every time, but have like a base layer provisioned. Thank you, Andres and Thank Jakob. You.